You ready? Track three on side two. I haven't done this in a little while. Oh yeah. The cowbells. The Jerry Murata cowbells. Yeah. I've heard the song thousands and thousands and thousands of times, you know, even before it came out and then a lot of times since, but those cowbells, I always make reference to them because we recorded the record, and people may know it, a place called Tittnerhurst Park where Ringo Starr was living in, in 1984. And, well, we entered, we actually entered the studio on February the 7th, 1984. February 7th, 1964, the Beatles came to Canada. So 20 years to the day we entered, and David Tickle, the producer, he, he loved this song among the, among the demos that I had, and he said, I, I just think that title, Strange Animal, is fantastic, you know, and, uh, and I, you know, I agreed. I thought, well, that's, that, that's great. But those cowbells, the reason I keep coming back is when Jerry Murata, you know, legendary drummer, one, maybe the greatest musician I've ever been in a room with, he kept playing them and I thought, are we overusing those cowbells? I've made reference to this before and I remember, but three days later, Ringo came into the studio because the studio was attached right onto the kitchen of the house. And he said, did everything work out? Yeah, I'm not gonna do a Ringo impression because I've done too many bad ones. But he said, did everything work out uh, from the other day? I heard you having a big disagreement in here and I thought it was sounding great. I said, what was that about? And he said, you kept going on about the bloody cowbells saying, you know, the record sounds really great, but what about those bloody cowbells? And he said, well, I love them. And I thought, God, it's funny he says it now, because 24 hours later, I love them too. You know, so I had to like, I'm retracting going, no, no, more, more cowbell. It was the first time that phrase was ever uttered, by the way. So, um, and then Jerry and I doing those background vocals of the ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Yeah, tremendous. There, there's definitely magic in this in this song you know in, in the song and but in the recording of it you know uh, David Tickle was such a, a quintessential producer in the in the 80s and he really understood the type of sound it should have and again that that, that uh, fair light doing the and the wolf howl those are all fair light sounds fair light was a kind of a electronic uh, a first computer keyboard that there ever was sampling keyboard and they were tough to come by and again, this part I always en envisioned the video, so I brought props today. Because now t TV's, uh, radio's on TV now, so the original bone of the original Strange Animal video, which is basically how you could get your song heard back then, was to get it on TV first. <laughs> wow. This section of the song here, as, as Tony Levin begins to really open up on the bass, I remember in the studio, that because he was overdubbing this bass part right here where he starts doing those slides he was playing sitting down and then suddenly he just he just burst up and started completely going into that whole section if ever anybody's seen tony levin with uh, you know with with peter gabriel or with any of the acts he's ever played he's, he's an intense uh, individual to watch when he's playing he was so animated suddenly at this this whole section of the song, and he was just, I, I, I was so, yes. I was knocked out with it. I was especially knocked out with it because in 1981, I saw Peter Gabriel at the gardens and they used to come down through the crowd. And Tony went right by me, I'd never met him. And, and they were, you know, they came through the crowd. And I remember putting my arm around him and he, and he looked at me at the big flashlight and I said, Tony, we're gonna make a record one day. And we made this record together. <laughs> that actually happened. And uh, God, this is this is the same place where John Lennon made Imagine. He built this home studio. So there's no way I can ever listen to it without kind of getting a a phenomenal emotional charge about the whole thing. That's great. Thanks for letting me play that. It takes me straight back to the thrill of taking that record home to my mum and dad yeah. and putting it on the record player. 
It's the, I just on I the gramophone. Know. It's just really nice. It's to the point where they may not even know who wrote the song or recorded the song originally. The song is almost that's that's when it becomes a folk song. You say we're not going to take it, and people know to answer, no, we ain't going to take it. That's the response. <laughs>